I would like to say good evening to the class. My name is Felicia Hamilton and I will be your moderator for this session. Welcome to another lecture given by members of the Southfield Michigan class. This is a school and not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Southfield, Michigan class was established in 1997. The Dean of the Southfield, Michigan class is Dr. Marvin Lewis, and the president is Dr. Edward Ewell. In this school, we used the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many, but we now know each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Greek language, the Hebrew language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud doesn't, excuse me, a cloud has no descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or sign. A super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given into salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple 
The intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preference of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and the function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary aims and constitution objectives of the class are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstitions, skepticisms, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of, of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan is speak the truth. At this time, we would like to have the class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Pedro Dominguez, followed by scripture, which will be Colossians, the third chapter, read by Dr. Lauren Lewis. Good evening, class. Good evening. A quick prayer, short to the point. Uh, through the mercifulness of Yahweh, he provided a way of escape out of this doomed world, and we should be eternally grateful to him, Yahshua, for this precious salvation. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yahshua. Hallelujah. I'd like to say good evening to the class. And I'll be reading out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testament, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts. 
revised by the late A.B. Trainer and the Scripture Research Association and reprinted by Yahshua Promotion. That's Colossians, the third chapter. If ye then be, then be risen with the Messiah, seek those things which are above, where the Messiah sitteth on the right hand of Yahweh. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with the Messiah in Yahweh. When the Messiah, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetedness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of Yahweh cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which you are also walk sometime when ye live in them. But now, excuse me, but now ye also put off all things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, excuse me, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but the Messiah is all and in all. Put on therefore as the elect of Yahweh, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as the Messiah forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things put on love, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of the Messiah rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of the Messiah dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to Yahweh. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of Yahshua the Messiah, giving thanks to Yahweh the Father by him. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as it is fit in the Messiah. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto Yahweh. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing Yahweh. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily, as to Yahweh and not unto men, knowing that from Yahweh you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, because you serve Yahshua the Messiah. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. For there is no respect of persons with Yahweh. Hallelujah. That was Colossians, the third chapter. Thank you very much, Dr. Lewis, for the scripture and Dr. Domingo for the prayer. Dominguez, sorry. We want to once again welcome everyone out to our lecture tonight. We are so very grateful to Yahweh that you're able to join. We do hope all are edified and that Yahweh gives us all um, something to say. Um, we will open up the floor for those who um, had a chance to attend the uh, Unity in Yah event in Florida for a chance to say something um, before I do, before we do that, I want to remind everyone to please keep your microphones muted unless you're called on to speak and your cameras turned off. And with that, we will like to um, 
open it up um, for those who had a chance to attend the Florida event to give a testimony. Okay, I guess I'll start. Um, it was, um, I, the Florida event seemed to me as a, a, a um, it was a summation of all the other events that went on um, within that maybe two month time period. And I'm speaking of um, Meridian in June, uh, the Green Bay picnic in July, and then uh, Florida in August, which I was not gonna go to, but um, one of the brethren um, talked me into it. And I'm glad actually that Yahweh allowed her to do that. But um, I think for me, and I won't say I think, I know for me, especially with Florida, what Yahweh did was uh, provide correction, um, strong, strong admonishment, and that admonishment was to stop agreeing with things that people say just because they're in your class or in your household but you take what you've heard and you look it up for yourself. You prove it for yourself. And to not just take something, some, something that's being said as true because of who's saying it. And I know all classes do it. We do it in Southfield. Certain person get on the floor, say something. Nobody goes back and checks it out. You know, don't do any homework on your own. That was strongly discouraged. And I'm grateful for it because speaking for myself, I know I do that. Certain people get on the floor, I just take whatever they say as gospel. And that is not what Yahweh, through Dr. Kenley, said for us to do. And even in the scriptures, it says to prove all things. So what that did for me was... um the encouragement, and I know Dr. Welsh will say this all the time, after class, don't just take notes and then just don't pick that notebook up until the next class. Take notes and go home and research and see if what they said was true because what you had going on, and again, it was the summation that happened in Unity and Yah, was that you had things that were being said that were at opposite ends. And unless you knew how to go into that book and then into, into those transcripts and into that textbook to prove it, you wouldn't know what to say or do. You just go, oh, that was such a good class. I like class and I'm having such a good time. Yeah, but what did you learn? Did you go back and prove those things for yourself? Because you're, you have to stand on it. And that, I was always the type of child when I was growing up that you just had to say something to me and I'd do it. I didn't, you didn't have to whoop me anything, even though I would get whoopings, but you didn't have to do any of that. You say it and I'm doing it. So the chastisement was taken with love. It really was taken with love. And everyone that I talked to after that said the same thing, that it was taken in love. And it it made you, I even talked to, I think it was Andy Ricardo and the Dean of Green Bay. Uh, when one speaker got on the floor and he was, you know, saying, be quiet, he said, he sat up in his seat. <laughs> and he, he sat up straight in his seat like he was back in grade school. And that's what it felt like. It felt like a true school, a true teacher trying to teach the students and for everyone to be quiet and listen, take your notes, but listen to what's being said. Um, and it's, interesting to me and it's something that I noticed because it happened first at Green Bay when um, we went to a, a venue and we were doing karaoke and um, we had the area roped off as that private event because they rented this this venue and we're doing karaoke we're having a good time everybody's you know when you're with the brother and you just you know you're comfortable it's like you know embarrassed I don't even know what that is when you're with the brother and you're just comfortable and um, this young man, I don't know how young he was. I just knew he was younger than me. He came in um, 
and he just, you know, went past the barricade and came in and and asked the DJ about, you know, a song. And, you know, he started looking up a song that he wanted to do karaoke to. And he had three kids with him. And, you know, we're all looking around like, what's going on? What What is he doing? So, you know, I I walked up to him because, you know, I want to understand, you know, this is a private event. It says private event. But. Um, I didn't ask him what he was doing. I said, okay, young man, if you're going to do this, you have to do it. You have to really do it. Put your heart and soul into it. He said, oh, I got you. I got you. So he, he gets up there. He sings a song, but he sings it to his daughter. He had two boys and a girl. He pulled his daughter up in a chair and he sang directly to his daughter. It was beautiful. And come to find out, he was a truck driver who was driving across country with his kids in his truck. So this is a venue. I don't know if he was from the area or not. This is a venue he just knew about and he brought the kids in and they saw how much fun we were having. So they came. So we gave the kids all the extra food and all of that. And someone talked to him about the gospel. I thought that was awesome. I said, see, that's probably the reason we were here to talk to that, that person. Fast forward to Unity and Yah, the same thing happens. We are out at the picnic Saturday night and um, they're barbecuing on the grill. And this guy just walks up to the grill, looks in there. And he goes and gets himself a bun. And he's waiting on hamburgers. So, again, I don't know why Yahweh gave me this. I walk up to him. I say, you know, this is a private event. He said, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He didn't speak much English. But then, you know, we said, but that's okay. That's okay. Go ahead and eat. So, we ended up asking another brother and could he talk to him because he he spoke Spanish. He spoke a little Spanish, not as much. So he talked to him a little bit. But come to find out the guy really enjoyed the energy that he saw coming from the brethren. Because remember, we're doing karaoke. We're having a good time. You see black, white, you see Mexican, you see Latino, you see all of this. And then we're all hugging and talking and singing and all that. So he ends up talking to another brother who's from another class that completely speaks Spanish because she's Hispanic. So she's talking to him and uh, come to find out he wanted to know more about the class. So, um, you know, we're talking while we're feeding him. She's because he he said to her, the first thing he said to her was, I'm hungry. And she said to him, okay, we're going to feed you physically, but I'm going to feed you spiritually as well. So she started telling him about the class. She let him know what we're about. And he says, well, I just love that you guys are all together and you're getting along and you're singing. So, you know, he sat for a while. Then, you know, I'm looking around after I did my little, you know, shenanigans on in the karaoke and I don't see him. Then lo and behold, he's coming back. He has his wife. And his two sons. His wife does speak English. So the, the brother in that speaks um, Spanish. Talked to her and she said, I have been looking for some place to bring my sons up in. She said, I came out of the Jehovah Witness faith. And I didn't like it because they told her because her family was not part of the faith of Jehovah's Witnesses, she could not talk to them. She couldn't have anything to do with them. Now, if you know, like I know, the Latinx community are strong on family. They have generations living in the same household. They are strong on family. They Black people have nothing on them. So she says she just could not get with that. She could not be a part of an organization that would tell her she could not be in touch with her family whom she loved because they weren't part of this religion. So the young lady talked to her for, uh, I don't know how long, but then they end up introducing her to uh, Joel, who's the Dean of Tampa because they lived in Tampa or they were moving to Tampa, one of the two. So Joel talked to them and told them where our, where the class was and what days the class were. And she was just so, so happy. And then the sons came over, they got their food and everything. And you know, the, the husband, while the wife is talking, the husband ends up sitting down and watching us sing more karaoke. He was just so comfortable. And I'm talking um, to the brethren that had talked to the wife after they left. And I just had tears in my eyes. And it made me think of those peace missions that they went on. And there was one peace mission where they ended up talking with the bailman 
they had a class just for the bellman and that bellman was so happy now remember he wasn't in a he wasn't a person of status or high ranking he was just a bellman but he received it more than those people with high ranking received it and that's what it made me think of with these individuals so it was the most beautiful thing and i'm like okay yahweh you've allowed this to happen twice and it was always at a picnic always when we're you know, singing karaoke. What is that about? And I'm asking Yahweh to show me the significance. But until then, I'm so grateful that he allowed me to witness that because this gospel has to be preached to the world. And what that showed me when it was, it wasn't during class. It was when we were so-called being casual and just having fun. But our conduct was still as such that it attracted people and they wanted to know who we are. Who is this group of people that don't look like one another, that are hugging and kissing all on each other, that are laughing and having a good time? Who are they? People wanted to be a part of that. And I am so grateful to say that I am a son of the most high Yahweh Elohim and that my conduct outside of class can actually attract people to want to know more about Yahweh. So, you know, as we were leaving, that's all everyone was talking about was like, can you believe that just happened again, especially the people that had gone to the Green Bay picnic that were also here at the Unity and Yah. And it was a beautiful thing because Yahweh is showing us you don't keep this under wraps. This is not for us. Like, they're doing in LA. Don't share it. That's not why this was given. Someone shared it with you freely, openly. You share it with others. So by being welcoming to these strangers and not just shooing them away, you can't eat our food. It was the, I can't, um, again, this was a conference like no other. There were not many people. It was under 200 people. Um, last year was more than that. I remember because I got COVID, it was like 300 people. So it was almost half. But it was so impactful. And I'm asking Yahweh because I've been doing my research, but um, I don't know if it's because of all the traveling or what, but um, I've been asking Yahweh to help me to uh, do my research in a way that helps me to understand what is right for, with what was being said on the floor. And that's not just unity and yeah, that was Green Bay, some things that were said that was, you know, Meridian. I want to do my own research. I want to make my confidence sure. I want to know what I'm supposed to know and not depend on other people because this is not a popularity contest. And that's one thing that I did like um, that someone said up there, you know, we have a habit of just agreeing because of, you know, maybe it's somebody in our household or somebody in our class say something. We just agree with it. We don't check it out. We don't do anything. You're held accountable. So you can't go when it's your time and say, well, you know, Yahweh such and such said that. And they're, they're a good speaker. They all, Yahweh ain't not going for that because he can have them say something incorrect just to make sure you check out what you're supposed to check out. So I enjoy I enjoyed the encouragement and the strong, strong admonishment from Yahweh through those vessels to say, Felicia, you get your crap together. You get your ducks in order. Don't worry about nobody else. So for me, it was more, yes, I had a good time, but that wasn't my main point. For me, it was, what was Yahweh saying to me? What is it that I need to know for surety? And, um, talking to others, I didn't talk to others to see if they agree with what I agree with. I just talked to them to ask, okay, what did you hear? I don't want to just say, oh yeah, yeah, okay, then then I'm right in my the way I think about it. That's not what I was doing because again, you have to do your own research. But I noticed that everyone, that's what everyone was doing. So it was really, it was a very different conference. And I'm again, grateful that Yahweh allowed me to go. Um, since then, again, you know, going to all those conferences, I've been asking Yahweh to help me figure out what it is that I'm dealing with. And if he gives me 
if he wants me to tell what it is, I will. Until then, I won't. But I've been asking him for the past few months, what is this? It's, it's a physical thing, and I'm, I don't understand it. And doctors can't explain. I'm like, Yahweh, what is it? I, I need to know. But until then, I'm asking him to let me focus on him. But sometimes it's hard because sometimes the days are just too hard to get through. But I'm asking Yahweh to um, please you know, get me through it. And again, if and when he wants me to share it, I'll share it. And please, because you know how we do, and I'm going to say we, because I know I used to do it. If somebody didn't say anything, I would go to their kids or go to their husband. Don't do that. Don't ask my kids. Don't ask my husband. If I'm ready to share it or want to share it, I'll share it. If not, I won't. Um, and that's what I appreciate when I think about Dr. Lewis. It, it took him forever before he talked about his cancer. Everybody else did, but he never did. And I'm like, please give me that consideration. Don't, you know, um, if Yahweh gives it to me to do, I'll do. But um, I'm asking him to let me focus on what it is that I need to know, because you can tell the the primary thing, if you've gone to all of these conferences, is Yahweh's shutting this thing down. So now what I want to see is, I'm not sure if North Dakota will have a picnic. I want to see if this if this theme of a person coming in that has never been in class is going to be repeated. I'm not sure. But what I do know is that Yahweh wants us to preach this gospel. I had the opportunity to go to Cleveland to visit some family this weekend. And um, I was talking to her about her religion. She's a Mormon. And I have to say it, but I'm like, you're black. How are you a Mormon? Mormon don't like black people. But um, she says she's Mormon because she likes the service. She likes the fact that they that their pastors or preachers or whatever you want to call them, they don't get paid by the church. They don't get a stipend. They have to hold regular jobs, just like everybody else. And that she's a part of their women's auxiliary group. It's supposed to be the largest in the world and they help people pay rent. They actually, you know, help people do things. So she said, you know, I that's why I like it. And I think she's about 73 or 74. So I said to her, I said, okay, do you guys use the name of Yahweh? And I can't remember how she finagled her way around the question, but I think she says something to the fact of, well, I study all religions. And then she started talking about, because she's a talker, she just started talking about her religion. I said, okay. I said, I call her auntie, even though she's my cousin. I said, auntie, I'll tell you what, when you come up to Detroit, I want to go to the Mormon temple with you. Really? I said, yes, I want to go. Because I want to, again, our fourth aim, study all religions, comparative religions. So I want to go. But what Yahweh, again, is showing me He's putting me in touch with people that I haven't been in touch with for years to share this gospel, not to prop Felicia up, not to, you know, connect with them any other way, but to preach this gospel because we are so close to being out of here. So if you did not get a chance to go to uh, Unity and Yah, they are um, going to have thumb drives. They're not doing CDs because they're just too hard to do. Um. You can hear what went on, but you all know it's different when you're there. The energy is different. Things are different. And there was an energy there that Yahweh corrected and that energy got still. It was just amazing to me. You could hear a pin drop. So Yahweh, it reminds me of Yahweh is in his holy temple. Let the earth be still before Shut up. When y'all and Dr. Kinley would say that sometimes, you be quiet. You listen. You pay attention. And that's what he's telling me. You start to pay attention. This is not a play thing. It's not a popularity contest. Yahweh is serious. I play. I'm playful. I'm a playful person. That's just who I am. I'm, I'm so glad to have met my family on my grandfather's side because they said, Felicia, your grandfather was the same way. But I'm serious about this gospel. I'm serious about not propping people up to be something they're not or not trying to be propped up. And that was one thing that Dr. Rhonda Brazil said in, in Unity and Yah on the floor. And I've said it many a times, but I appreciate her saying it. She was like, you know, I don't know what list I'm on. She was talking about being called. What list I'm on, but take me off the list. She said, because I don't want to be put on a pedestal. I don't want people putting me on a pedestal. She said, because I don't want to experience what Yahweh will make me do for me, for me to be knocked off the pedestal you have me on. And I'm like, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So again, this thing is serious. Um, 
I know we've heard that, especially ones that were born in class or raised in class like myself. It is serious. And the older you get, you understand how serious it is. And excuse me, I'm going to have to stop talking in a minute because it's starting to have an issue. But I am um, grateful uh, that Yahweh allowed me to go because, again, I did not want to go, but I was strongly, I will say encouraged, I was asked, but it was a voluntold kind of thing. And I'm very glad that Yahweh did that through that vessel um, and that I got a chance to experience what he needed to say to me at that moment and at that time. And with that, I will give all my honor, praise, and glory to Yahweh through his son, Yahshua. And with that, I'll say hallelujah. And um, I'm sorry, do we have a hand raised? I can't tell. Yes, Rhonda yes. Walker. Okay, you can be our next speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, class. Good evening. Um. I, I really, really enjoyed the words of the previous speaker. I did have an opportunity to make it to that event. Um, and I'm happy to have anything, a reasonable testimony to say about it, which to me, it was awesome. <laughs> From before I even got there to the time I got home, Yahweh really showed his power to me because ultimately that's because every child does have to stand on his own bottom. That's that's what it's supposed to be. This is supposed to be a personal thing, personal relationship with Yahweh. And that is what this did for me. Um, the topic was um, how to look unto Yahweh, who's the author and finisher of our faith. And this trip was one of those trips that I'm telling you, for me, it helped establish my faith. It helped to really solidify my faith in Yahweh because he showed me even just just getting there, I, I thought I wasn't going to be able to go. As the previous speaker said, he didn't want to go. I wanted to go, and I thought I couldn't. And it, it it was down to the last moments. I mean, literally the week before the trip, before Yahweh made a way for me to get down there. And not just a way. He made a way for me to get there conveniently within my budget. When I got there, he put brethren there to, to, to share the gospel and to help. And as you said, the things that were said on that floor was so incredible. It's like almost like saying you had to be there, you know. And we, I've heard so many people speak about these conventions, how you're sealed, and you know some things you just how Yahweh gives you pearls, and He did that for me, you know, all the way to tonight's class. Because ironically enough, I was studying today, and I was actually reading the scripture reading, Colossians the third chapter. Mm. <laughs> I, did, I, I almost fell out my chair just sitting here when they called the scripture reading for the day. I'm like, wow, won't he show it? So um, there's a, a few things. Um, Dr. Brazil was talking about that um, one scripture, the book that Yahweh wrote. And um, if that's the correct transcript I'm thinking of, it was a portion in there where there was someone um, they were talking about, you know, how they, they wouldn't get called on, you know, because. You know, they're, you know, they felt like they were insignificant, like, oh, I don't matter. You know, I, I'm not no, I'm not a big wig in class. And I, and I can, I'm, I identify with that. Like, I'm not no big wig. You know, I don't get called on the lot. I'm, I'm just happy to be here, you know? And that was in there. And when, and when she said that, she ended up getting called on, suffice to say. I'm paraphrasing out of it. You have to read it for yourself, of course. But um, just from that moment, just him, showing me these things at the conference, the admonishment. And it, it really made me have to take stock. Like, am I really studying? Am I researching? Am I even taking notes, you know, or am I just writing scriptures? And I do want to, um, I want to go back to the scripture lesson. Um, also, uh, can you start with Hebrews 12 and 2 for me? I, I just want to read that um, first. And then um, while you're grabbing that, also, can you get um, Psalms 46 and 1 and then grab Matthew 16 and hold that for me? You want to Hebrews first? Yes, please. Okay. And that's Hebrews 12 and 2? 12 and 2. I'm sorry, just a second. So 
so it, it, you know, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go, if you wouldn't go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say that you know, so that that's what this conference was about. It's it, it's about faith. And see, we definitely have to have faith, you know, in Yahweh. You it, that that is just so important. And I know I wrote it down somewhere, but if somebody can get the definition of faith and hold that for me as well. But go ahead and read that for me. Hebrews 12 and 2. Uh, can I start at 1? Yes, please. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let mm -hmm. us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto mm -hmm. Yahshua, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for and the I, joy. And I'm glad you started. I'm sorry, I'm gonna um, be interrupted here and there. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I want you to actually. I'm glad you did start at one. Can you can you start back at one again? Sure. That is Hebrews twelve and one. Seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Okay, yeah. I just want to stop right there. Um, just for a second. Now we're 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 encompassed by a great cloud of witnesses. So you know, faith isn't just blind faith. You know, we 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 know that we have to have a knowledge. You know, a lot of times, uh, you know, we get taught. You know, at least I was taught, and I speak for myself. You know, I was taught. You know, have faith, just blind faith. You know, don't question God. You know, just have faith. And I just always wonder, like, okay, if I'm going to have faith, what, you know, how do I always wonder how do I have faith then? Like, how do I do that? Like, I, I just believe what the person is telling me. And, and that if that went out the window definitely at this conference, because it was definitely shown on the floor. You don't just believe what somebody say just because they said it and just because they who they are. Even Dr. Kinley said, don't believe me because I said it, but make me prove it. And he went a step further and he said, make me prove it until you're satisfied. Until you're satisfied. Now, that's a powerful statement. Just that right there in itself. Not just make me prove it. But until you satisfy, so I don't keep proving it over and over and over and over again, which is which establishes your faith. Because just like with Yahweh, his pattern, his purpose, his plan, he overturns and overturns and overturns. If you could pull up that one chart that has that at the top of it as well, that, because we, you know, we have to see his sheep hear his voice, and he shows, he reveals himself unto us as well. So, um, go ahead back um, where you were at. I'm sorry. Uh, let me start again at the first verse. Wherefore, mm -hmm. seeing we are also, excuse me, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed <laughs> about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And, and see right us, there. So let us lay, uh, I'm sorry. So let us lay aside every weight. So all of that. All of that unnecessary stuff that we bring in, all those, like you say, that garbage bag full of our own ideas, our own opinions, our own concepts about what we think this should be and we think that should be. You no, know, lay all of that, because that's a weight. That is a heavy burden. That is a weight, you know, that we carry along with us. Lay aside all of those things that easily beset us. It's easy to fall into those ideas. You know, you listen to something long enough, you start to believe it's true. You know, you, you, you know, uh, you know, sometimes you can make a lie sound so good that uh, you'll believe it's true, but it's not. It's a weight. There's things that need to be laid aside and set aside because we have a th we have something to do. We have to look unto Yahweh. We have to believe that he is. We have to have faith in what he's doing in our lives and just in his purpose, because all of it is to his glory. All of it is because of his purpose and plan. It's not about us. It's about him. That that gives me faith and confidence. Um, go ahead, continue. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking mm -hmm. unto Yahshua, the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising mm -hmm. shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of Yahweh. Okay, that's good. Thank you. 
Thank you. So so we we definitely have to look unto Yahweh. He, he is the author, and he does things to let us know. He is our refuge. And go ahead and grab Psalms 46 and 1 for me, because he shows us day in and day out. And it's one particular part in, in the Psalms that that stuck out to me, and that is just so beautiful. Go ahead and read um, Psalms 46 and 1. Psalms 46. And, and these are things that, and I'm sorry, and, and for me, these are things that, you know, as I said, was helping to solidify my faith and what he's shown me on how to lean on him, knowing who to look to, knowing where my strength comes from, knowing where my help comes from. It's not of any works of my own. It's not from my brother, from a cousin, from a friend. No, it is from Yahweh, even if he uses best, because he uses people. He puts them in your life for a certain thing, but it is him operating through that vessel. It could be a vessel that you don't even want to deal with that he'll speak through. He'll speak through a rock if he wants to. You sit there looking at a rock and all of a sudden something pops your head, the rock talking to you. But you know, he gives a man visions. He speaks to his children. He talks to us. That gives me faith. Go ahead with that. That's Psalms 46 and one. Mm -hmm. Yahweh is our refuge and strength. A very mm -hmm. present help in trouble. Okay, that's all I wanted of that. So what I want to point out, Yahweh is our refuge. He is our strength. He is the one who strengthens our faith. He strengthens your faith with your with the things that he allows you to go through, the things that he allows to happen to you, be it physically, health-wise, mentally, however he chooses. So choose because this is his good pleasure, because all things work to the good of those that believe, that love him all things so there's some things that can happen in your life that, that, that you know or, that, things that happened in my life that i thought was the most awful thing that could happen to me and it turned out to be a life-saving grace grace and mercy something that you could think that's just oh this is you i don't know why did it you said you want to sit up oh yeah wait why did this happen happen to me but then he start to show you this is why see it, it, yahweh answers us see that's the beautiful thing about knowing your heavenly father and knowing something versus then just listening to the preacher on the pulpit and him telling you this scripture and that scripture and just reciting it and you know very motivational speaker and giving you the good feeling no to know something to know it for certain because he's showing you and then he points it out and brings it to because the hum the comforter which is the holy spirit whom the father said in mind he, he will bring all things back to your remembrance so he will speak it right there to you. And the thing that stuck out about this with him being our strength and our refuge is he is a very present help in trouble. Present, not past tense, not somewhere far off. Like people want to believe, oh, he's off in the sky somewhere. No, he is a very present help right now. He is establishing our faith. Right now, in every situation, at that conference, right here in class tonight, yesterday, when you was walking Fido, when you was having lunch, he is establishing your faith at every single second with every breath you take because you are praising his name, number one. Whether you want to or not, he's going to get his glory. That right there should give you some kind of faith and confidence, but that very present help in trouble. So even when you're in trouble, the trouble that you think is trouble is not really trouble. That gives you faith. He said, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden and burdened. You know, take my yoke upon you because my yoke, how, how does it go? Help me out. It, it, my burden is light. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And if I'm wrong, please correct me at any time. But it, it, these are the things that gives us faith. Even all the way. And then now go, go ahead and go over there to Matthew 16 for me. And um, I, I really want April 16. But um, if, if you want, you can start um, above that. But see, these are things because, like I say, Yahweh will show you this conference with the admonishments, learning how to shut up sometimes. Because I talk a lot. Yeah. It, it, you, sometimes you got to be so, hey, be quiet. If your teacher is on the floor, if you're in school, when you're in high school or middle school or elementary school, you know, where kids talk a lot. Let's say it like that. Where kids tend to talk a lot and be rambunctious. And the teacher has to say, hey, sit down and be quiet. You have to learn this because this is your basis. This is your foundation. This is stuff that you need to learn to be able to build upon, to go forward. This is a part of the pattern. This is a part of the plan. 
This is how you get to time table, multiplication and division. You have to learn one plus one. You have to learn this addition. So, you know, when, when, when we start to uh, forget, and this is why this is so pretty over here in Matthew. Go ahead with that. And you could just drop down to um eight. Go um to eight. This is Matthew's the 16th chapter? Yeah, 16 and 8. Matthew 16 and 8. Which when Yahshua perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason you among yourselves? Because you have brought okay. no bread. So yeah, you are going to have to start up a little further to get the train of thought. Just start up a little further for me. All right, I'll start at the fifth verse. Okay. This is Matthew 16 and 5. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Yahshua said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And so he's admonishing them to beware right here. So he, he's telling them, hey, be, oh, watch, be careful. Mind what you're doing. Pay attention. Go ahead. And they reason among themselves, saying, it is because we have taken no bread, which when Yahshua perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason? And just, um, just be, uh, just, I'm sorry, and like I said, I'll be interjecting. So right there, because they hadn't taken any bread. Now, don't they sound, you know, similar to like the children of Israel get out in the, in the wilderness there? And, oh, my goodness, we, we, we don't have any bread. We, you know, we had all of this good stuff down in Egypt and stuff. Oh, we didn't bring it. But Yahshua just told them, be careful of the, of the Pharisees' leaven and all of that. It sounds very familiar. So to the law and to the prophet. So this is, you know, uh, in, in a sense of fulfillment of that. You know, take don't take no heed of that. Go ahead. And they reason among themselves, saying, it is because we have taken no bread. Which when Yahshua perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason mm -hmm. yourselves? Because you have brought no bread. Do you right. Look, look how he's talking to his disciple. And I think that is so, I think it's so cool the way that Joshua talks to him. You know, it's like with his hands and start kids. I'm like, what? why are you talking like that? What, because you ain't got no bread? That, that's why y'all sitting there murmuring over there? You're really? Go ahead. What are you going to say to them? <laughs> Do you not yet understand? Neither remember the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many mm -hmm. baths you took up? Neither the seven loaves of the 4,000 and how many baskets you took up? How is it that you do not understand that I spake it, excuse me, that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that you should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Mm -hmm. So then, so, so, so I, I'm sorry. So, so here he's saying, so you, you don't forgot everything I done did already. Yeah, 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 yeah! Out here murmuring because y'all forgot to bring bread. But did you forget what I've already done? See, that's faith. Oh, ye! The first thing he said was, "Oh, ye, a little faith." I have some faith. You done seen all of this that I've done already? Are you still slow to believe me? <laughs> you forgot about the five loaves and the seven loaves and all of these things that you've seen me do. Why don't 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 waver now? Have faith. Know that I am Yahweh. I am your provider. I am El Shaddai. I am your almighty provider. I am your refuge. I am your strength. I am your life. I am your life. You don't have no worries in Yahshua the Messiah. That's how you have faith. Because he has shown you what he's done for you. He shows you every day. Every day. He even had to remind his disciples. That's not the first time he said, oh, yeah, little faith. He continuously tell you to have faith. Look at what I've already done. He does not tell you to have blind faith. He's shown you what he can do and what he's capable of. Have faith in that. As a matter of fact, do you have the definition of faith? He shows you. He gives you proof. You cannot deny what Yahshua has done. You cannot deny what Yahweh is doing. This establishes your faith. 
the very fact that you sitting here hearing my voice, the very fact that you were in your right mind, the very fact that you were even re wanting to hear anything and learn and know something about Yahweh is his doing. That should establish your faith right there. Okay, and you have that, the definition of faith for me. Faith. Allegiance to duty or a person. Loyalty. Fidelity to one's promise. Sincerity of intentions. Belief and trust in a loyalty to God. Belief in the traditional doctrines of a religion. Okay, and it was it, it was one the definition in particular that I uh, came across, trust? and it actually that one. Yes, yes. Read that definition. Complete trust. Mm -hmm. Complete trust. That is faith. Complete trust in Yahweh. Complete. Trust that Joshua came and did what he said he was going to do for the reasons he said he was going to do them for. Complete trust in your heavenly father that he will fulfill everything that he says. Every promise to a jot and to a tittle. That is your faith because he has shown you without fail, without error. If Moses can go down there and build that tabernacle without making a mistake, because that's what Yahweh showed him up in the mountain. He told him to, to, to uh, make a sanctuary after the pattern in which I showed you at the mountain. Now, he couldn't make a mistake in making that pattern, that most holy place, holy place in the court roundabout. Everything had to be specific, right in its place, the exact dimensions, exactly like Yahweh said. Now, complete faith is what caused that to be completely the way Yahweh said to do it. He didn't make no mistake because it was Yahweh that showed him how to do it, that gave his hands to working and, and made them do it that way. All the way from the tabernacle in the wilderness up to Solomon's temple. And how beautiful was it that they didn't even hear them building Solomon's temple. <laughs> didn't even hear them hammering or nothing. That is faith. But you saw that temple. You saw that temple. See, faith is knowing that this gospel will be preached. And he said, it'll come a time when we wouldn't be able to meet in person. We may not be able to be in person. Did that time not come? Didn't COVID hit? And couldn't nobody go to class? But this gospel did not stop being preached. And as a matter of fact, with the venue that we have now, it's really being preached all over the world. Because now, instead of just trying to physically get your brother, hey, come on, won't you go to, down to this class? Now, they got risky. They at your house. And class on, and you know what? Just turn on class and start listening to it. Just talk about it. Just turn it on. Turn on YouTube. It's there everywhere. This gospel is everywhere. It is proof in the pudding. That is faith. That is what I've learned to completely trust in Yahweh and everything he has to say. His admonishment because whom he loves, he chastises. If he didn't chastise us, that means he didn't love us. He chastised everybody in there. And if anybody that was offended, then what, shame on you. Because Yahweh loved you enough to correct you and say, hey, don't forget to find out for yourself because every tub has to stand on its own bottom. Ye believe in me, believe in my father, believe, it, believe, 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 have faith. I just can't say it enough because it is so important and it's more important to me personally now because he is starting to allow me to understand in a way that I did not before this. And it's incredible how it seems like it happens just that quick. Like you snap your fingers, like you're just in the twinkling of an eye. But, but when you look back, hindsight is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing because you can, when you, when you get to a certain point, you can look back and see how he was setting you up the whole time. Just one event after the other, overturning and overturning to get you to a certain point. To get you to a knowledge of him. To get to even get you to know his name. <laughs> he used my brother and, and for three months almost before I would even agree to come to class. Before I would even agree. He will use anybody anywhere. And it's not the vessel. Don't look at the vessel. 
I'm glad that the brethren was saying that. Don't look at the best the Yahshua, the Holy Spirit is the teacher. I didn't learn this because Wanda was on the floor. I didn't learn this because Marvin spoke. No, I learned this because this is what Yahweh showed me. This is what he spoke to me personally, just like he spoke it to each and every one of you personally. That's faith. This is how I look unto him because I see the salvation. I stand still now and I see the salvation. Is things easy? No. That's why back to Psalms 46 and 1. And he is just refuge of your strength, very present help in trouble. So that means you're going to still have trouble. Trouble don't go away because you learn about Yahweh. As a matter of fact, I've had more troubles learning about Yahweh than I did before. Because before I was a conformist. I went along with the crowd. I was, a, oh, I was accepted because, oh, Rhonda go to church all the time. Oh, yeah. Rhonda, just, yeah. Rhonda loved the Lord. Mm -hmm. But Rhonda had a zeal without a knowledge. See, now, now that I got a knowledge and an understanding, and he's allowing me to understand more and more because I don't get it all. I, I am still very, I am like a still very new. You would have thought I came into class two years ago, not 12 years ago. But it is in Yahweh's time. It is. It is in it in his time. Um, it's just it's just amazing. It's just so much, and my mind is just so everywhere. And it's just it, I, I got so much food to see how people can be easily deceived. How Yahweh can allow a strong delusion to come upon people. Just, oh wow! Just learning about some of the 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 erroneous doctrine that people are teaching now out here, it, it, according to this doctrine, people that knew the truth. And hold that truth and unrighteousness now. That is mercy and grace that he allows us to see these things and know. Because when you therefore see the, des the abomination of desolation, stand in the holy place. And that's where I'm standing. That's where I'm standing. I have to stand. I have to. I will and I must and I have to stand in that holy place. Because I know that Yahweh Elohim Yahshua is the only one who is able to do anything because he is the all in all and sweetie pie, that is all. And, and with that being said, I just say hallelujah. Thank you for letting me share. The floor is still open to those who um, may have had a chance to go to Unity and Yah or any of, any of the other events actually. Um, if there is something that you always put on your heart and mind to share uh, with the brethren, please feel free. Okay, with that, we will call our next speaker, which will be Dr. Alexis Hamilton. Good evening, class. Good evening. I am happy to be here today. I really thoroughly enjoyed the previous speakers and what Yahweh had to say to us through them. Um, every class, I swear, it's... Uh, Yahweh just speaks through, he speaks directly to you because some of the things that everyone was mentioning were things I was already just kind of thinking about. And that just proves to me that he's always listening. And we're often thinking and going through the same, not the same things, but oftentimes we're thinking of similar things in regards to this gospel. Um, which proves to me that we are, you know, within the body. Um, could we get the scripture lesson? Because I really enjoyed that as well. Colossians. Would you like to start at one? Yeah. Please. Okay. It's Colossians, <clears throat> excuse me, three and one. If ye therefore be risen with the Messiah, seek those things which are above, 
where the Messiah sitteth on the right hand of Yahweh. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Yahshua the Messiah. When the Messiah, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetedness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of Yahweh cometh on the children of disobedience. In the which ye also walked some time when you lived in them. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, Barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but the Messiah is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of Yahweh, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. Okay, I'll pause there for just a second. Thank you. Um, seek seeking these things which are above and. Um, I want to get uh, Matthew 6 and 19, um, which is reminding me of that. Um, seeking this gospel, just like the previous speaker said, to stand in the holy place. And when she said that, I don't know why my brain went to it. I'm, I'm a scary movie person. I love scary movies. So I'm just thinking of just how life is beating us up like it's a monster in a scary movie and we're just trying to seek a place of, of safety and you just got to get to that place of safety and you'll be safe from the monster coming because that monster is nothing but life and the devil walking around on this earth because it's always some problems it's always it's always something so it's like we're you know having this gospel is like having that 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 safety room it's that that arc of safety and I swear whenever it, you, you know, you kind of, I don't want to say, uh, what's the word? When you, when you don't make this a priority, you notice certain things. Uh, and I swear just keeping this gospel as a priority in my life is what keeps me sane because this world is, is hot. It's, it's hot in all types of ways. People are angry. People are obsessed with uh, what's right and what's wrong. Uh, one thing I do love is how people are, you know, trying to learn about the truth of things. Um, you know, we, uh, I'm noticing people, you know, calling things out, trying to show, uh, you know, proof of what they're saying and things of that nature. So I do, uh, love that, um, uh, and how people are calling out, um, you know, those places of worship that they may go to. I'm noticing people are, also hungry they are hungry for that truth they they want to find some type of um spiritual home um some for some reason they feel like it has to be a church you know i'm hearing a lot of people like oh i just really want to you know find somewhere you know like a church and just have this church home that they can go to and just get this motivational speech to feel better and then go home and do what they need to do and that's not what you're supposed to be doing you're supposed to be continuously learning about the truth of Yahweh and just like the first speaker said you want to question everything you don't just take it because it's the pastor of this huge church for 15 years you know you question what he's saying. you ask him questions um bring back the research have dialogue with him about it um and and yeah can we get uh, the Matthew the six six and nineteen, please? That's Matthew and six and nineteen. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, 
where moth and rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Thank Continue. you. Um, no, no, we'll pause there for now. Thank you. Um, again, you know, don't don't uh, dwell on the things of the earth. All of this is not going to be here. And I remember hearing something saying, uh, everything that you possess right now, if this world is to continue to go, keep going, all of this stuff isn't going to be yours anymore. You know, like everything has an expiration date within your life, including your body. So the one thing that we know is eternal and forever is the creator. And it only makes sense to try and, you know, focus and learn about. It. Um, and I know another, another thing I'm noticing just, out in the world is how much people are kind of um, bringing uh, in, in this seeking of truth and everything um, exposing like the the pollution of everything you know everything is polluted as well you know even the food that we're eating is hard to find anything that's just you know pure but there's a reason for that because Yahweh is the only one um and you know we're just we'll we'll actually can we just keep reading um, in Matthew? Mm -hmm. For where I will start again at twenty one. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thy eye be evil. Thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve Yahweh and Mamma. Okay, yeah, you have to pick one. I'm sorry, Auntie. You have to pick one or the other. You know, you can't be both all within this world and then also, you know, here as well. Like you have to keep Yahshua first. Mm -hmm. Every every single day, I am just, I'm. I, I notice that with my friends that I'm often, and I'm just been doing some reflection um, of myself since turning 31 but just I've always noticed that people would say something along the lines of you know I wish I was more like I wish I was more like you like your your demeanor is just always just you know calm and you know I can't put my finger on it and every single time someone says that I say it's because of this gospel it's because I'm practicing the gratitude because I know what Yahweh has done for me and continues to do for me and I know that he has me. And, you know, I thank Yahshua for that because, you know, I often try to, you know, make sure I am preaching this gospel to whoever I look, um, just to extend that, you know, that branch um, to invite them over because this is so important. Again, everything that we own and possess, we're not going to have any, you know, th these bodies are aging every single day. And, they don't last forever you know like um the dean dr marvin lewis also always mentions when someone passes you know and you're at the funeral you see them you know you you say they're gone but what do you mean they're gone they're right there but we know it's that spirit that is what animates us and that is what will continue to live on not this body um Go ahead and continue. That's the 25th verse. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, 
what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed, arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if Yahweh so clothed the grass of the field, which is which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of Yahweh and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow will take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Thank you. Uh like the previous speaker mentioned, faith, just like we saw on the dictionary, faith means complete trust. It's either you have faith or you don't. And that is something I've mentioned before that I struggle with, you know, with anxiety. Anxiety is nothing but stress and fear and worry. Like, why are you doing all of that? You have faith that Yahweh got you and he's going to get you through the situation you're in, just like all the previous situations you've been in your entire life, or you don't believe. And uh, I just love this, this scripture and the scripture lesson just talking about, you know, you seek the things above, you know, don't be worried about everything that's happening in this, in this earth. Like it's supposed, uh, I'm going to look up this note that I wrote down. Someone mentioned in class, um, uh, The devil is doing everything he can to make you abort this with different things that may come up in life. You know, you notice, you know, um, those thoughts that we often mention, um, you know, oh, I don't have time for class. I don't have time to read or to study or anything like that because I have to do this or I have to I have this show I need to watch or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um that that's just the devil doing doing what he's supposed to do he's trying to merge you away from this gospel uh, and he doesn't go after you with things that you don't like it's usually things that are appealing to you and you don't even realize you're under a deception uh, and you know i'm just so grateful to have this gospel because i can i can read this and know you know what yahweh is saying you know, and, and to just not worry about the next day. Don't worry about tomorrow. Focus on this gospel. Focus on him. Focus on this right now. And I feel like that goes along with um, just uh, how I was mentioning. I feel like a lot of conversation nowadays is just trying to seek the truth and calling out the liars and all of that kind of stuff. It's the same thing with health uh, and and the talk about everything being polluted and how we're trying to just be healthier. And that also goes with um, mentally, you know, we, we mentally are, I have personally been having a lot of conversations with peers and friends about um, just mental health and how important that is. And, you know, how um, we're trying to break out of maybe things we've learned in the past, unlearning things and how hard that um, and it's the same thing I'm seeing with, you know, friends that are in, you know, churches and such, you know, it's hard for them to unlearn those things. And I'm just thankful to Yahweh every day, you know, thank you 
Um, I may have grown up in this gospel, um, but I am grateful that he has kept me because there have been people that have grown up in the gospel that aren't here anymore. And, you know, my prayer is that they do, you know, eventually come back and, you know, uh, get within this love again. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just grateful, uh, for everything. And, um, I'm I'm loving everything I'm hearing tonight. I always do, and often uh, I'm always hearing, uh, you know, you never come to class and you're, uh, once you leave, you're just oh I can't I, I just wasted so much time. Like oh I just, I could have did this, I could have did that. I am grateful every time that I log into this class. I feel refreshed. I am ready. To, ready to go. Sometimes I need to hear more and I'll turn on a, a, a class on YouTube to uh, when I'm about to go to sleep or something, you know, like um, I'm grateful for this hunger and I pray that I continue to have it so that those situations the first speaker was talking about where people are kind of drawn to you. Uh, my prayer is to help me uh, articulate in a way that can grasp them. Uh, so that is something I've always been working on. I always felt like I'm not great with words, um, but I am seeing how Yahweh has this journey for me, especially with, you know, being one of the moderators now. I knew eventually that was going to happen because my mother is one, but I see the benefit in being one. You know, you're learning how to articulate explaining the gospel. So once you get that now, you can go ahead and, and say that to any and everybody. Um, so um, everything that Yahweh puts you through is for a reason. Uh, there's this thing that, I, that I've been hearing. God uh, is, you know what I mean? Uh, God's rejection or rejection of God's protection is what I've been hearing. So we know that when things aren't working out for us in this in this earth, that is just Yahweh possibly protecting you for something. Um, and I remember someone mentioning, you know, it's even the small things, like maybe you're on the way to a meeting, and you forgot something at home. So you had to go back home and you were so annoyed that you had to go back home, but it was probably him keeping you from getting into a collision. You know, like it's those, those small things um, in our day-to-day -day lives where we might be irritated or something like that. I just try to bring myself back you know, just thank you, Yahweh. Thank you for, you know, keeping me safe. Please continue to guide me. Please continue to love me. Please continue to protect me. That's always my prayer. And uh, I feel like I'm going off. So I'm going to end it there. But I just thank um, Yahweh again. And I've enjoyed the previous speakers. And hopefully someone got something out of that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Hamilton. And for our next speaker, we have you call Dr. Devon Wilson. Felicia, you can't hear you too well. I'm sorry, Dr. Dewan Nelson will be our next speaker. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Nelson. Were you able to hear me that time? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, is Dr. Nelson on? No, he was. Let's he see. was, I don't know. Um, nope, he's not there. Okay. For our next speaker, we'll have Dr. Marcus Brazil. Um, good evening, class. Good evening. I um, am grateful to be on and be in, in attendance tonight. And I enjoyed the words of the previous speaker. And I just um, was listening to the things that they were saying. And I'm going to same 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 frame of mind that I'm thankful of knowing this gospel and it kind of puts you in a perspective where and you kind of be reminded that not everyone knows what you know and then 
what has been given you has been revealed to you. And you have to, and it kind of humbles you down. And I have to reflect because it has to go back to Sunday because I remember I was sitting on the hallway from the class Sunday and the doors closed and you can't hear what, what was going on at the time. It was just starting to start with this class. So it was, it was a scripture lesson, but I'm outside saying to myself, if I get called, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say that, you know, and I've been, and I'm sitting there and I'm saying to myself, and I'm saying to myself, I have to stop doing that. I'm like chastising myself. I have to stop doing that because I know Yahweh always would give me the words to say and the things to say. And that time, and that particular time, you know, the scripture was being read. And I said in my head, take no ancient thought. That's the word that the scripture came to mind. And that was a scripture lesson they were reading exactly two seconds later. It was Lauren Lewis that was on the floor, and she said the same exact word. No, I don't know what it was me, but that's just something personal. But what we look for sometimes is confirmation, and you know, are we on the same wavelength? Are we in, the, in you know, are we out somewhere, in, you know, thinking outside the box or somewhere? But y'all always remind you that there is no. Uh, there is no nothing that Yahweh already knows is going on with you. Now, there's nothing that's going in your head that Yahweh don't already know what's going on with you. <laughs> but say it that way. And it, and it, and when I got in class and I kind of heard that, and I was like, he know he knows he knows what's going on. And so that's my was my comfort at the, at the you know that's my always my comfort is Yahweh always know <laughs> or all, all in control of all things. And and for the things that I. I'm able to say because I wasn't able to talk. I wasn't able to speak, have words, or articulate. I'm still crazy with it, but I'm you know, always been working with me from what I used to be, where I couldn't say anything or couldn't have anything to say to where now I can. I can say articulate or, or get the word, or get the words out. But I kind of leave, try to leave myself out of it and kind of let Yahweh work or do it. You know, Yahweh speak through me if that if that because it's been times where, you know, I'm just, that makes you humble and grateful. And I have a few scriptures, a few things that I wanted to get, which was, um, first one was Romans 1 and 1, talking about Paul, a servant of Yahshua Messiah. Now we read Romans 1, 19 and 20, and we kind of go up to Romans 1, 16, but I want to start at 1, Romans 1. That's Romans 1 and 1. Yeah. Paul, a servant of Yahshua the Messiah, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of Yahweh, which he had promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Because mm -hmm. his son, Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. Mm -hmm. Good which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the son of Yahweh with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead, mm -hmm. by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Mm -hmm. On whom are you also the called of Yahshua the Messiah? To all that be in Rome, beloved of Yahweh, grace to be, excuse me, called to be sons, grace to you and peace from Yahweh our Father and the Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Is he kind of sing, singling people out, I guess I can say it that way. Because first of all, I'm talking about Paul, who was called and separated. Right, and then he's talking about to the other ones, the beloved, who's also called and separated. Because it's not everyone that's going to be called, if I can say it that way. Because you know that that, that is Yahweh dealing with was only dealing with a 
a particular, I can't even if I can say particular, but we now know that we thought that everybody was going to just straight understand because I remember when back in the day we used to sell somebody about the gospel and they thought they they would get it because I get it, you get it. <laughs> we had to find out, y'all had to teach us or me. <laughs> it, it don't work like that. If y'all ain't before you, before you, now y'all ain't don't, was not for him to know, he's not going to know or you, you know, but y'all, you know what I'm saying? So that kind of puts me in perspective because we had that this on these fast we had to we never thought about those those statistics of the world and where you stand or where you you know because well looking myself I knew I was you know not raised or the last recollection of church I had was leaving it and I was not raised in the Lord God Jesus Christ and so I couldn't wouldn't have was like you know an under attachment but even though I was born in the class it was a time where I had Yahweh in a box on the shelf and, you know, didn't really understand. Now, surely, not surely, surely, as in sure, sure, I just, over the years, Yahweh has just slowly revealed himself to me to now the point where my faith, or in this, my faith is not in the things of the world or it's in it's in Yahweh who's working through the things in the world, if it makes sense to me. Like you, you now you see Yahweh working in things in the world. You don't just see things you know, like world events or things that's happening in the news, whatever you're happening over here or there. You see Yahweh working with this one and that one, how he's moving and correlating things. You know, just like the manners of a man's mind, he always is, is controlling that also. Positive, negative, up and down, as the previous people talk about, things in the world is happening. You now know Yahweh's operating both sides of the story. You know, it's so. I'm sorry I got off track, but you can continue on because I'm going to get now to 16. Just keep reading down till you get to 16 in Romans. Eighth verse. Mm -hmm. First, I thank my Elohim through Yahshua the Messiah for you all. Yep. That your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For Yahweh is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request if by, by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of Yahweh to come unto you. For I mm -hmm. long to you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that I am Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah, for it is the power of Yahweh unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of Yahweh revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of Yahweh is revealed from heaven against all unholiness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them, for Yahweh has showed it unto them. Right. For the visible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and supernal nature so that they are without excuse. Right. Because that's that's good. That's good. I'm just, I'm, you know, it's just, and you think about the story of Paul, he was knocked down and blinded for three days and shown the truth about, or, or the truth about 
what he was doing or what he was, was going. So he got away, they turned him around, and now he ready to preach the gospel to anyone and anywhere, according uh, you know, under um, the gospel of Yash Messiah, and that he's not ashamed of it. And in the reason, you know, and we have, we have to take that to ourselves where that same thing had to happen to us. Now, I was thinking about when they think about Paul, they think about, well, that's an example of us. We we had to be knocked down and turned around and blinded and made to see because we, we thought we knew what we were talking about, and we did. But then that, that's another humbling part, part. You think we got it, or uh, we say we have the truth and the whole world, the whole world is wrong, and then now we had to click me back and say, uh, uh you didn't know either. <laughs> Just like the world didn't know. Hey, the grace of Yahweh showed you in verses this one over here, you would have been in the same boat. You'd be doing the same thing. And so nobody knew, unless, according you know, to know the name of Yahweh. No one knew the truth until it was revealed to us, just like it was revealed to people, other ones in the world, in this class or in this school, by the vision that was given to Dr. Tony. Now, that, that's just something we had to be truthful about. You know, you can't say you're better than this person, that person. Yahweh has to humble you down. You can't. Be over somebody because you always just knock you right down. Now, I'm thankful for that. Now there's another scripture. It is the conversation of the spies that went out to spy out the land of of, of Canaan. The ones that came back with a good report and evil report. It's somewhere in the scripture. I don't know where that's at, but that conversation where they went out and they came back and was going to tell them what they saw. And it was an example of having the faith in what Yahweh said, he'll give them that land. And then people say, and murmured and say, they can't take it because it's this or that. It was a whole, it's somewhere in the scripture with that conversation when they came back from, from spying out the land. People know what, that, what that's at? Yeah, go look real quick. Yeah. But this just reminded me because you had to remember, you know, it's like having full Numbers faith. 13 chapter. Was it again? Numbers 13 chapter. Okay. And so that's like an example of having total faith in Yahweh. Yahweh is giving you something and then y'all say, no, we can't do it. Yahweh ain't, ain't going to happen. And and it's, it's like an example of a bendigo or, you know, being in, in the furnace. You know, it's the same it's the same situation because they're, they're, they're taking no anxious thought of what Yahweh is going to give them or being a, Yahweh being their creator and their savior. And he says number 13, so it's 13 to 1. Uh, no, I think it's you You want when they came back from the land. Is that what you're looking for? Back from the land, or, or if it's all in one, one thing. It's just 13 to 1 cool. when they went down. Two spot. Numbers, I think it actually starts at 27, but numbers 13 and 1. Okay. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Send down right. men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I mm -hmm. give unto the children of Israel, of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every right. one a ruler among them. Right. And Moses, by the commandment of Yahweh... 12, 12, 12 spies, right? One for each tribe, right? 12 spies. I believe I've got that correct. One for each tribe. I mean, it's 12 spies. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Go ahead. Right. And Moses, by the commandment of Yahweh, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. Right. And these were their names of the tribe of Reuben, Shamel, the son of Zachor. And then it names each one of the tribes, if you wanted me to go through. You can that. drop down. Oh, no. Just drop down past that. Yeah. That's the 16th. 17. Try 17 to 33. Okay. Go ahead, read, Lauren. Can you read it, Dr. Nelson? I don't have okay. it. Okay. I didn't hear what you said. You said numbers 13 and 16. 13 and 17. 17. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get you up this way southward and go up into the mountain. And see the land, what it is, and the people that dwelleth therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. And what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, 
and what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds. And what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not. And be ye of good courage and bring of the fruit of the land. Now, now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zen unto Rehob as men came to Hamath. And they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron, Hebron where Ahiman, Sheshai, and Talmai, the children of Anak, were. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zon in Egypt. And they came unto, into, unto the brook of Esh, Eshkol and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes. And they bare it between two upon a staff. And they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. The place was called the brook Eshon because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And mm -hmm. they went and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told them and said, we came unto the land whither thou sendest us and surely it floweth with milk and honey and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. And the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan." And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. That's the mm. end of that. Okay. And I see the, well, I heard that. And then the part that I just heard just now, it's funny. It's like you hear things again. You heard it just now. And you say, let's go up and possess it, right? He says that first. Then he, then the other person says, we can't, well, he had to read it again. Oh Let, us go, Let us go up and possess it. That part right there. That verse right there. Right. Okay. That is the 30th verse. Right. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. <laughs> That's it right there. I, mm -hmm. I didn't catch the first. It might, I don't know if anybody catches it, but I, to me, it's like this. The first, well, what's his name? It's Caleb. It was Caleb. I don't know his name. But mm -hmm. he was telling, let's go up together and possess the land, which he always said, they'll give, give them land. And the next person said, we can't go against the people. And I said, no, it's, I don't know about me, but I'm, the per, if, you, if you're looking at the person, yeah, you're looking at, you, you're not talking about, you know, people, you know, the person, they're more about the people, right? He said the land. He gave him the land. <laughs> it's, it's, mm -hmm. It makes a difference to me. But if y'all always say he's gonna give you the land, now he's gonna take care of the people. 
they're looking at the person, looking at they're measuring themselves up against another person. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Like you, you always gives you a thing. We're not looking at people. You're looking at spirit, but you're looking at what he said he was going to do. You, you know, you your faith is what he said. You're able to give up and take it. I don't know. That's just me. But that just gives me. It gives me the same, the same type of spirit that he was given to you know me, Shabrak and Abednego. We're, we're able. We're all able to, to overcome whatever the y'all. You know, he's given us this. He's given us the power to overcome, just like he gives us the power, a spirit to overcome things in the world. Now we can't look at the people. <laughs> we can't look at. But the, I don't know. That's just me. I don't know. I, I see that, and it's just it, it's just like. Things that have reminded you know we won't take and put it on to ourselves, but some examples that you have to take, you have to make them put yourself in their shoes, and you look to see what would you do if you would obey Yahweh or look at a person. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's what you always. Maybe it's just me, but you're always individually talking to every, each one of us, each one of us. And I'm thankful that He just showed me that's a little tidbit for me. That's for myself. But I had to. That's just it's rejuvenating to hear that you understand if you stick the what Yahweh said versus what some person said or looking at what you measure yourself against another thing going on, but you know, that spirit in you is greater than what's in the world. You know what I'm saying? It's like an example of that. Yahweh in you is greater than what goes on around you. So give it a situation that you're in and you ask Yahweh to help you in that particular situation at that time. He has the power to sway anything in front of you out the way. I've had that happen plenty of time. Not being boastful or not saying that you just got the power to walk around like any kind of, you know, like you're a Christianite or something, but being humble and knowing that Yahweh is controlling all things. And in, and, if, and if he's with you always, he's knowing exactly what you're walking into, what you're about to go into, what you're not about to happen. You sway the different direction, like the people say, he'll take you another direction just because, oh, you went all the way around, but you find out later, oh, that happened right there when I was about to go through that. You know what I'm saying? I always show you later. You know, I'm just like, I'm just want to ramble on, but y'all just when he gives you a just a, a tidbit, an inkling of what's really going on, it just puts you in a certain perspective and it makes you understand that Yahweh is really real. And we say it all our lives that he is the omnipotent creator. Just knowing that little bit. And the things that's going on in the world now, it puts you in a certain spot. And it puts you, it should put you in a certain spot where you just have to be grateful. You can't be boastful, you can't be, you know, a certain way uh, to a certain person because you think you have, you know, you got it made or everything. It puts you in a humbling, actual, constantly in a humbling state. And y'all, and if you get in that way and you have to ask y'all with it, Please take that from me. We're still working with us every day. Being in the flesh, you're still subject to all these things that you know going on in the world. But if we have an advocate or something that's going to be by our side every single time, without fail. That's what I see in that story. That's what I see where he's giving his spirit to ones and he's leading them to say things or to give them land or Make an example of the people of the other, like Cain and Lang and you know, on the high tights, and they were like giants to them. But Yahweh didn't deal with numbers. <laughs> oh, he dealt with the children of Israel and those 12 against all those people. He can take those 12 and decimate that land. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm just thankful to have just, uh, that, just that little bit of understanding. That gives me peace, personal peace from the world that you can't get from the world and from things that's going on around you. Only knowing that Yahshua Messiah is, is your only savior and creator and the ones that's crowned all things. Now, that's what may not bring that little bit. I don't want to ramble much too more, but I'm just thankful to have contribute to, to this gospel in any kind of way. And I ask y'all to, to please help me out because I know I'm an idiot and I have to stop me, help me stop being an idiot <laughs> if it makes sense to anybody. Because I sometimes you, you, your own worst enemy is yourself. And you figure it out, and y'all will build up to you too. Things that's going on in your own head will mess you up, or or be a hindrance or a distraction to your own self. But um, those those words is, is for an encouragement, also, as far as the brothers stick with the 
truth in that shop or anything, anything, you find out you have to ask, you have to ask for. I don't like this, I don't like this by myself. Ask Yahweh, and he'll definitely correct that. Maybe not at the time you do it, maybe not the, the, the time frame you think it's going to happen, but Yahweh heard your prayers. Here's what your troubles. Hear your, like, say, complaints. But here's your complaints. And I'm thankful just for that a little bit. And um, all praise to Yahweh Messiah. And I'll say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Dr. Brazil. And for the remaining 10 minutes, we'd like to call Dr. Shirley Nelson. Dr. Nelson. Uh, good evening, class. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I guess you can. Okay. I really did enjoy the class tonight and the words. I, I enjoyed all of the speakers and just the words that were said is so comforting and enjoyable to hear here as you sit here in your home and after a day's full day being here, there, everywhere, busy. And then Yahweh allows you to sit, be still, calm the mind and talk to you and talk to you through the gospel. And one of the things we come down recognizing through this gospel, this beautiful gospel that was delivered up to us through the mercy of Yahweh when he gave Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley a vision. And he gave the vision to him and told him to teach the people, or he said that he would teach Yahweh's people. And it's just a beautiful thing that at this time in all of our lives, He's allowed us to be still. We go to these different lectures and so forth. And I enjoyed the words that the people said about them. I'm sure they were, uh, that it was a beautiful lecture. Because if you can get anything out of it, where Yahweh has shown you more perfectly himself, then that is positive and that is good. And one of the things that we know is we come down here to have the things that we hear of this gospel proven to us. Why? Because the gospel itself has the power to raise us from the dead. As we sit on our seats by the preaching, our souls are resurrected. Just sitting here, just listening. If we receive it, if we believe it, then, then we are resurrected. Let me have that over there in Ephesians. Once you heard it and then you believed it. I can't recall where exactly it's at. If someone knows real quick, if they can get that. So Yahweh set this, and you can just call it out if you get it. Yahweh set this entire thing up for us all to know and know that it was, he had always set up a sacrifice. See, was set up under the law, if you will, that they had to take out a lamb. You see what I'm saying? Or take out a sacrifice. It was that blood of that sacrifice that was going to atone. See, go and get me. I know there's not a lot of time, but let me have, did anyone find that scripture? Well, hold it anyway. Yes. Uh, just hold it. Leviticus 17 and 10. Just get that for me real quick because I was reading over there and it's talking about how that those sacrifices were set up under the law. And that's what we were saying. See, but all those things that was under the, or in the law that you can read prior to Yahshua coming in, it was talking about him. Let me have that scripture and then someone else go and get for me where he talks about over in Hebrews, the 10th chapter, 10 and five. But let me have Leviticus 17 and 10 first. Leviticus 17 and 10. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn among you that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And mm -hmm. I have given it to you upon the altar to make in an atonement for your souls. Now he for said, I have given it to you to make an atonement for your souls. Now you see what I'm saying? Now that is pointing because those sacrifices, now did you go over and can you get the one Hebrew 10 and five? That's all I wanted of Leviticus, but go over Hebrew. 10 and five Hebrew. Hebrews 10 and five. 
Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Mm -hmm. And burnt That's offerings mm -hmm. and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Okay. Now, so that in the law, those atonement or that atonement, see, that had to be the blood of that sacrifice was given for an atonement, you see, for the sins that was only pointing to, but that sacrifice wasn't good enough. See, it was just a type and it was just a shadow for the time then. But once the Messiah came in, he's got to fulfill all of that. So only he is that worthy sacrifice, see, and it's through by his blood, Shana, the bet atonement or true atonement for sin that is made, see. And that's why he said, sacrifices and offerings thou wouldest not, but it is a body. It was going to be the body of Yahshua, the Messiah, see. Now, Yahweh had the power to transform from his pure spirit state into that Elohistic body known as Yahweh Elohim. And then later to step into that physical body, see, or step into the flesh. And we know that that flesh is just the sacrificial form of Yahweh, if you will, see, because he prepared that or caused that to be. This was his means that he was going to reconcile the world back into itself by the blood of the lamb or the true lamb, which being Yahshua the Messiah. I know the bell is there. Yahshua has just been telling me so much about the worthiness of what it is that Yahshua Messiah has done. And through by his sacrifice or shedding of his blood, see, the, he had to ascend into heaven after that death and that burial and that resurrection. See, we learned now, we just recently heard right here in this school where there is someone that made a statement and had made statement that the gospel was a man. See, wanting to give some kind of homage or glory to a man. But I have you know that the gospel truly is the death, how that the Messiah died, was buried and resurrected according to the scriptures. And when we learn how the Messiah did that, according to the law and to the prophecy and understanding that he came in to fulfill all things, then we can recognize him as our true savior. And as the scriptures, as the other speakers have talked about, when this gospel is preached, see, or his true death, burial, and resurrection, according to the scriptures, See, then you have the ability or it gives you or it is the power to resurrect you as you sit on your seats. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? It's not a willy nilly gospel. It is making it, it will make a profound effect on your life and who you are. So now go over and get me that scripture because time is out over in Ephesians and didn't want to rush. In it, but he's had me reading that. Let me have Ephesians, please. Ephesians 1, and I'll start at 11. All right. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, mm -hmm. be destinated according to the purpose of him who worketh mm -hmm. all things after the counsel of his own will, mm -hmm. that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in the Messiah. Now, who and first trusted in the Messiah? Now, if you read that first part again, could you start over, Dr. Lewis, please? 11th verse. Mm -hmm. And whom also we have obtained an inheritance. He said you have an inheritance. You see, you understand. See, that's like the father and he has a son. And see, and now the son inherits what the father has already set up for him. See, in this case, Joshua has allowed us to have. See, see an inheritance through Yahshua Messiah. He done already prepared from the foundation of the world those who he was going to gather unto himself. Do you see what I'm saying? Now go ahead and read. Read. And whom also we have obtained an inheritance. That's right. Read. Predestinated according to the purpose of him. 
Mm. who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. That's right. Read. That we should be to the praise of his glory, mm -hmm. who first trusted in the Messiah, mm -hmm. and whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth. Now see, the after we heard, just read a little bit slower, Dr. Lewis. After you heard the word of truth, which is the gospel, or the death, burial, and resurrection. When this gospel is preached, see, after you've heard it, you trusted it. You see, see, there is some, some validity in that. Read. And after you trust it. And after you trust it. Let me start that in over. In whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, mm -hmm. the gospel of your salvation. Mm -hmm. And whom also after that you believe, mm -hmm. you were filled with that Holy Spirit of promise, mm -hmm. which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Mm -hmm. Wherefore I also ask so, uh, you can stop there. The time is out. See, but we trust it. See, once we heard it, we believed it. See, you have to believe it and you have to receive that. See, and Yahshua will make that clear in us, right to our souls. See, so there is some real benefit for being in this understanding and in the true gospel of Yahshua Messiah. And that benefit is eternal life in him. I hope somebody, if you got anything out of that, all praises go to Yahshua. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Nelson. And that does conclude our class for this evening. We want to once again thank everyone for coming out to visit with us. We um, hold our class. I'm sorry. Um, if it be Yahweh's will, we will have Science Thursday this Thursday. Um, and we hold our classes here every Tuesday and Thursday on Zoom from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And on Sundays from 11 to 1. We will be in person this Sunday, and we will also have children's class this Sunday after class, and that's 11 to 1 in our usual location. May we all stand in our hearts and minds to give a moment of and reverence. And on Hair to, Talk are going crazy over this celebrity's hair. Sorry. To our, that, that's okay. To our Savior, Yahshua Messiah, through the doxology, which is taken from the last two verses, verses from the book of Jude. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present your soul faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, before all time, now and forever. Let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah.